Just who exactly is Octoroo? Well, he is one of the only two followers that are utterly loyal to none other than Master Xandrid himself. However, he is the only one that's not there by a deal or coercion or anything else. He actually looks at Master Xandrid and said he's the one to get the Nylox all together and working and efficiently run the entire system of, well, the Sansa River Empire, essentially. The entire Nightlock people are not at any circumstances united in any fronts. It is basically winner take all, only the strongest is allowed. Kind of like, essentially, the olden days of the feudal system of the Shogunate. You kind of had one guy at the top and everyone is vying for that power, but as long as the, the top is very strong and keeping everyone together, it's not going to fall apart. That's kind of Master Sandrid. There is always schemers and any type of system, and well, there's a few here and there, but Octoroo is kind of there to push them aside and make sure that they don't step in front of the might and majesty that is Master Sandrid. He's usually the one coming up with all the schemes and going on from there. He has all these complex ones, poisonings, all the types of things that you would see from a politician wise rather than a straightforward Nylock just looking for power grabs like Master Sandrid or any of the other ones that have the ability to just attack the rangers themselves. Octoroo has never actually stepped up to fight the rangers without them being impaired in some manner. He's only taken advantage of a few times or getting on the battlefield himself, but he's not one to look out to do anything to really, well, essentially fight the rangers for, for very long. He can attack an impaired Jaden but that's kind of it. He doesn't really have the power strength to deal with everything out there. He kind of uses tentacles to uh, wrap things up. He's the medicine guy. He's the one coming up with schemes. Like, of all the different things, he's kind of not really a fighter. He's more of a talker and a negotiator, guys, which was what Master Xandrid has. And I don't think Master Xandrid would actually let Octoru kind of like stick around if he was too much of a threat to him. He'd probably just kill him and go to the next person. However, I do believe that Master Sandra looks at him and goes, you know what, you're useful, you get rid of my headaches with your medicine, you also know how to deal with some of these Nylocks that I just don't want to have the time to deal with, because you know what, a lot of them have petty quarrels that I don't care about. And he's kind of the one responsible for that. He's the only one that believes that all Nylocks should have the common same goal, unlike a lot of Nylocks who are kind of just selfish and looking out for themselves. Now, nine times out of ten, he's usually on the ship with Master Xandrid kind of maintaining, taking care of him, and protecting him while he sleeps on the Vegas of Senses. He can't do a full-on battle, but he can do enough to wake up Master Xandrid when the thing gets really rough out there. He is also the only one doing the introductions of various Nylocks to Master Xandrid to help defeat the Rangers, and he has all these different connections and seems to know everyone. While Master Xandrid only knows like a few of them, he just doesn't even, he seem to even care about what their name was. The only other person on the ship most of the time to keep up with Octoru is Dayu herself, and he seems to have a fondness for her at times. They do clash and have, um, you know, some petty quarrels here and there, but nothing too serious. Octoru seems to actually care for her, her on several different levels, mainly because her music is the only thing that seems to soothe the raging headache that is, well, happening inside of Master Xandrid's head, and he's appreciative of that on many different levels. But beyond that, she doesn't. He doesn't really see her too much of like of an ally at times there's sometimes a lot but ba basically like compared to a lot of other Nylocks she's not really the best of the best but you know what she serves her purposes and he she is a Nylock in the end so he's kind of like okay with that one of the only times that uh, Octoru would actually step out from beyond the ship is when Arachnator boarded Xandrid's ship and basically planned to force the Red Ranger to show the ceiling symbol and Octoru kind of agreed out of fear because Master Xander was away for the time being. But I think he agreed out of fear, but also went, you know what, this is one way to take care of the issue. Because they had learned about the ceiling symbol as the thing that kind of hurt and damaged Master Xander beforehand. It might have been the very reason why he has a headache. So he's going, if we get rid of the ceiling symbol, possibly no headache, but then no major threat after that, and the Rangers can go down after this. Now, upon learning about the plan, Octoru has his own little plan as well. He plans to poison the drinks that would be served to the rangers at the Ten Gay Gate, and then attack and remove them right then and there. He, that's the kind of plan he was working off, and it worked pretty well, except for the fact only Jaden was poisoned. But in the end, 
if you're trying to kill the guy who's the only one ability to seal the things is Jaden, he succeeded wholeheartedly, guys. And then he demanded him to show the sealing symbol in return for the antidote. However, I doubt he even, even if he showed him the sealing symbol, he'd go, okay, if you got the sealing symbol, I'm gonna kill you and I'm gonna steal that sealing symbol and make sure I, I confirm the kill. He was just trying to confirm the kill. There was no antidote, I don't think he was ever gonna give him. But the plan was later foiled when Antonio would arrive and before Decker followed up and took Jaden away to cure him. Which further upset Octro because he's going, what the heck, why is Decker stealing away the guy I'm trying to kill? We're all Nylox here. But he's like going, whatever, I can't, I can't fight a bunch of rangers right now. I, my plan's all messed up because, well, Raptator can't deal with all the rangers and now Decker's stepping in to save Jaden, who is the only one who could seal away Master Xandrid. Or at least they think it is in truth. Now, after that, Octoroo just retreats and heads back to the Netherworld, where he's back on the ship and starts to explain himself to none other than Master Xandrid about his plan. Master Xandrid kind of just like, kind of upset, but then, you know, you know what, Arachnator failed in his job, he could have killed the rangers, but he failed, and he tried to desert me, so I'm gonna beat the crap out of him, but also, Doctor, you know, I understand, you were trying to take care of the rangers, you trying to save me, um, you, you gotta pass, and that's kind of that entire conversation, Doctor stays in the ship and is still loyal to Master Xandrid, and Master Xandrid just kind of like, pushed that aside, technically yes, he didn't go by the orders, but I think he saw that of the two, Rakitor was just trying to prove that he's stronger than Ma Master Xandrid, while Octoru, right then and there, was immediately going, I'm trying to do for the good of you, as well as all good Nylox. And Master Xandrid kind of realized that, and said, you're good, you're good, buddy. We're gonna, we're gonna ignore that little betrayal, kind of, but you know what, you're good. Now, another time when Octoru would step in is when he learns about Sir Raider's betrayal, and he quickly informs Xandrid of the treacherous Nylock, who he was already suspicious of on several different levels of this guy named Serrator, which causes Xandrid to become super enraged. He goes on a brawly level of rage, runs to the human world, and basically just shows up in a cloud of darkness and evil to deal with the situation. He didn't even care about the rangers. He was going after Serrator himself. Now, upon his arrival, Serrator flees instantly, going, um, what the hell, I can't deal with this. My plans are not ready yet. But Master Xandrid then quickly shows his hand because he dries out rapidly, faster than any other Nylock has before him. Like he starts to literally turn to stone in front of everybody. But not before he basically he brutalizes the Rangers themselves and manages to re regain the alliance of Dayu back to her, back to his side essentially, after repairing her harmon harmonium, her instrument that would basically take care of his headaches. He then pushes, uh, when he returns, taking Dai with him, Octoru quickly pushes his master back into the netherworld before calling for a colossal mooker company to distract the rangers, going, okay, we gotta, we gotta deal with this now, hopefully the, the moogers can deal with it, if not, it's fine, get Master Xandrid back because he needs to heal up. Now, he places his master at the bottom of the Sands River to recuperate because the rangers didn't do much damage to him, but the drying out process did and almost left him basically dead and if he's dead there goes the entire unification of all Nylox and the conquest of earth now seeing this serrator arrives and easily threatens octoru into working for him while working for serrator he doesn't have the same loyalty as he does for master xandrid and quickly realizes that serrator is unlike master xandrid serrator is a manipulative power hungry warlord and while master xandrid is a warlord but he's just super powerful he serrator thinks he can do everything on himself and has really no like care for the entire results of how things are done he would willingly sacrifice nylock after nylock well kind of the same thing for master xandrid master xandrid also doesn't have the planning there he act doesn't have any action planning just lets the nylocks do what they do while master uh, serrator has these plans but does it will willingly sacrifice Nylock after Nylock to achieve them. Octoru doesn't really kind of like cares about that. He's going, why are we sacrificing our people if you, for your, just your own personal goals to show that you're the strongest instead of just like getting stuff done. However, eventually Octoru realizes he does have a plan. He has a plan to flood the earth in a certain way by dividing it in half and allowing the sensor River to rise up from there. He goes, that's pretty smart, but I really don't want Serrator in charge of that. And after Serrator's destruction, 
Octoru kind of just swooped in and took over efforts to flood the Earth, as well as reuniting with Dai once again. He's going like, hey, we have got a plan, we're gonna get this stuff done. It was he who sent the Nylock Freya to the surface knowing that her fire had the power to destroy the head of the Sheba clan, who they thought at the time was actually Jaden. And when that failed and it's revealed it's somebody else, he's like going, what the hell? Okay, interesting, interesting. Their fire burns hotter, but it's somebody else's fire. Interesting. He also was so informative of the cause of the Nylock basically fight he later sacrifices half his life force to Gigertox, or Geigertox. I, know, I pronounced his name right in his own video, but I can't say it anymore. Uh, in order to grant him a third life, resulting in a third transformation of after the giant monster fight. It had like a giant dragon monster thing that nearly defeated the rangers themselves. But he had to sacrifice half his life force. I don't see Serrator ever doing that. I definitely don't see Master Xandrid ever doing that, or any other Nylock willingly sacrificing their lives to do, for the fight itself, for the cause. That is just how much Octru was dedicated to the cause itself of the Nylocks. Now, it was in another brief moment that Octru kind of shows his emotions towards his fellow Nylocks, or half Nylocks. When he heard about the demise of Decker, he kind of told Dayu that since Decker's gone, she's got nothing left to lose. So, like, you can put your whole things, you got to help us out here, we can probably do some more here and get this stuff done. But he wasn't, like, saying it in, like, a sadistic way. He was, like, going, ah, you, you got nothing much to lose, you might as well help in the fight here. And when he said that, he said, he said a new sad tune about Decker might be able to help revive Master's Editor and as well as increase his power. Like, this would be the way to get back at the humans who killed Decker. And she agrees. However, it's to her own demise. Like, I, I don't think it really, I think it really caught uh, Octru what happened. Like, I caught her completely off guard because when Master Xander returns, he absorbs Dayu, and Octru goes, what the hell? And he briefly mourns Dayu's demise because she was the one who, like, did all the stuff. Like, if it wasn't for her, Master Xander would not be back, would not uh, have his headaches be cured all this type of stuff like he's like going and like he was oh she was always there on the boat even if they had like a little quarrel sometime like different things here just quarreling about different things she was always there and kind of agreed with him on several different levels and he kind of had a connection to like not really like a father daughter thing but more of like a friendship on like a frenemy thing so like it was a probably a huge loss going um okay she's gone and now, because of her absorption, Master's Arrow gains immunity drying out and the ceiling symbol. So, like, he's going, well, it, it it's good because, like, our the Masters, like, can now deal with these major issues that he had before. But, yikes, like, what is that, uh, does that mean that any Nihilok that could basically help Master's Arrow is on the list to be chopped up and eaten and devoured to make him stronger? Ugh. Now, as a result, it allowed the Senzuru to finally flood the Earth. Now, it doesn't sound that bad, but like, oh, it's just a river. Um, it's a toxic river to humans. Like, it melts the flesh and burns away concrete and stuff like that. If humans come in contact, it will utterly destroy um, anything there. Any type of organic material on Earth would be basically devoured. Which is interesting because the ship they're on means that it's not a normal ship it is basically like special wood because it's able to sail upon the river itself while any other like trees and stuff like that would hit by the sands river would be just utterly destroyed um however octor did not accompany his master when the flood finally came he stayed back in the netherworld and watched and when master center was defeated the sands river began to withdraw from the mortal realm and Xandrid's ship sank with it in like a maelstrom like thing taking Octor with it leaving his fate entirely unknown and makes you think that well he could come back guys he is not dead he's not been destroyed and he might have be leading a new cause maybe he realizes it's his time to come up with like take over because the brute forces have failed but it's time for someone else I would love to see Hasbro bring them back and see if they can 
talk this guy into like eventually coming back in some other series dealing with the different well manipulations that he can put out there he's a very smart villain i would love to see that now the character himself is very like influenced by finster as well as kegler finster from mighty morphin and kegler from lost galaxy he's um, also very scheming personality just like uh jinxer so he's got multiple different personalities. he's pulled together and worked together here and there and he's the only one that you have like a sense of like this guy actually seems to like care about the entire process his entire concept here is that he is a squid or a cephalopod and he looks he looks he has that asian motif to him because they, they if you look close in his face which is very horrifying past the tentacles like give, give, give him a creepy mouth all i gotta say guys and he's always like smiling but he's always got that manipulative grin going on and his tentacles are not just there for decoration he can grab people with them and he's got a staff he's like that wise sage that you see or also any type of uh like the like the long wispy mustache that goes down it's kind of like that same type of feeling he's very manipulative he's not the uh, front of aggressor he's always back plotting and i kind of liked octo a lot and i'm glad they didn't kill him off or at least as far as we know he's not dead so i hope they say they bring him back it'd be a good little talk up and a little wrap up of the entire story of well samurai because technically speaking the nylocks are still a threat they're still out there master's edge was just one warlord we haven't seen like their origin story we don't know like if there's a king behind them all if there was someone beforehand you never know well i hope you guys enjoyed this video of the story of octoru his past his present and hopefully we'll get more of his future soon and i'll see you next time ooh ah ooh have a good one guys may the power protect you always